Hello and welcome to this week's Glass Tire Top 5. It is the week of May 18th, 2017. I'm Christina Reese. And I'm Brandon Zeck. And we are counting down the top five art events in Texas this week. Number five this week is at Mass Gallery in Austin. It's a group show, three artists who actually live in Austin, and then one who lives in Georgia. The show, I, I didn't know how to talk about it when I first saw it. It's very kind of post-apocalypse. You know, it's commenting on the contemporary society that we live in, the political landscape, yada, yada, yada. But a lot of the work in it is very kind of messed up either in a dark or a funny way. So like um, Austin artist Ted Carey, he, a lot of his pieces are kind of either useless objects or objects that are kind of destroying art. Like he has some photographs that um, are half in the frame and then half tacked onto the wall, or he has paintings that have been crushed or a photo that can't fit in a frame, you know, the frustration of that. So he just crushes it and puts it in the frame. Um, it's a really funny show, but it's really dark and kind of lifeless at the same time. And you should go see it because it's kind of a weird, eerie experience. All right. So number four this week is Erica Stevens and Barbara Horlander, uh, two different shows at Road to Art in Dallas. Um, you know, I finally got to see it. It's been up. It closes this weekend and the gallery will be open on Sunday as well uh, because they're going to do a panel discussion and it will be these two artists along with uh, Lauren Cross, who will be moderating, and Vicky Meek, the artist and activist. Um, it, this is a feminist art show, I guess you could say, but I think that's incredibly reductive. It's a lot of fun. It's incredibly charming. These women are having a lot of fun with kind of claiming or reclaiming uh, the female form back from sort of the male gaze, etc. Erica Stevens has isolated these moments from Renoir's paintings and... Um, and kind of blown them up and used a tremendous amount of paint and had a lot of fun doing it. You don't really have to know the Renoir angle to like the paintings. They've got their own personality. Barbara Horlander, Fort Worth-based artist, is doing these sculptures that are um, referencing body parts and women's work and domestic items. Uh, they're a little bit sinister, but they're also very, very funny, and they're they're very appealing just as just as individual objects. And um, it's fun. The whole show is fun. If you think feminist art has to be some sort of a buzzkill or whatever, this is a good way to, you know, remind people that that's absolutely not the case. And I actually usually not the case. Number three this week is in Houston, and it's a show by Otis Jones at Gray Contemporary. This is Otis Jones' first show in Houston in 20 years, which is mind-blowing to believe because I've seen so much of his work in Dallas and in Fort Worth. What can we say about Otis Jones that we haven't already said? I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a great, great Dallas veteran artist, painter. He does acrylic on canvas and then mounts them to boards. So these paintings are as sculptural as they are anything else. And the surfaces are amazing. They're burnished almost, it seems like. The colors are very muted. He's got these little pops of color. If you want to get into the nitty-gritty, nitty he's deconstructing the process of painting by showing how it's made and kind of sh he's showing how the sausage is made really because he's showing the glue and he's showing the staples and he's showing all of the parts of paintings that you never really see you got oh, yeah. houston really needs to take advantage of the fact that they can go see some otis jones work right number two this week is at inman gallery in houston and it's a show of works by uh New York-based artist Mark Swanson. It's called Inclinations. Uh, I saw it earlier this week, and they're really great kind of quiet pieces. If you walk into the gallery, we'll put some shots up. You know, they're all approximately the same size, hung on the wall in a row. So the installation looks boring until you actually get up to these and start looking at them. Um, they hung his plaster sculptures, which are like little vignettes, uh, next to these uh, collages and graphite drawings. In some of them, he's painting on the glass, and then that's kind of adding a dimensional element, or he's extending the drawing onto the mat that frames it. Um, and I think it's just really smart usage of materials. The uh, images themselves are just very pleasing to look at. Well, number one this week is Ronnie Horn. Uh, this show is opening at the National Sculpture Center in Dallas. It's kind of the big opening of the weekend. I'm unfortunately going to miss the opening, but I'm really looking forward to the show. I love Ronnie Horn's work. She's as she's New York based, but she's as well known for photography as she is for sculpture, as she is for using text in 2D and 3D work. So this work, this show is going to be eight 
really large scale cast glass cylinders. It should be beautiful. This artist knows how to work with this particular material incredibly well. And I think this is the first solo show that's dedicated to this sort of body of work. Um, and it's the first solo show of Ronnie Horns in the U.S. since 2010, um, despite her international status. So and here's what I like about Ronnie Horn is she goes, when she decides that she's into something and is going to focus on something, she goes really, really deep with it. So what are you, uh, what are you doing this weekend, Brandon? Um, I'm probably going to pop over. I think there are some like workshops and stuff happening around the Lawndale uh, studio resident exhibition. Oh, cool. Are you? Uh, I need to go to England for a little bit under sad circumstances, but I do think that while I'm there, I'll get into London and I'll get to maybe see the Giacometti show at the Tate and that sort of thing. I'll be working no matter where you are in the world. Uh, go see some art. Go see some art.